Yes. They're looking at that one as the big case. There's a decision coming down in D.C. soon that could affect Jack Smith. How? We legal folks are getting impatient here. So, yes, <laughs> Donald Trump, this is the criminal case. He argued that he has immunity. We heard this oral argument three and a half weeks ago. And I think given how quickly the Court of Appeals scheduled that argument, yeah. we thought they were going to rule real quick. Well, here we are going on three and a half weeks. So people are wondering what's going on. Time is of the essence here because here is where we are for that argument, the Court of Appeals. Whoever loses going to try to get it, of course, up to the U.S. Supreme Court. Meanwhile, the district court, the trial court, they've been on pause this whole time. Judge Chutkin has already made pretty clear in her other rulings she's not expecting that March 4th trial date, which is now about a month away. That's not going to hold. But the question is, how quickly can they get it back there? And there's also Georgia. Let's yeah, not forget a, Fulton County. A couple things we do know when they're coming. Today, we will see the official courtroom response in a brief, a written brief from Fonnie Willis to the allegations that she's having an improper relationship with one of the outside people who's working on the case, Nathan Wade. She has not responded officially to that yet. And let's not forget the ballot challenge, the 14th Amendment challenge. Colorado has removed Donald Trump from the ballot. That case is going to the Supreme Court. The argument will be on Thursday. Watch it here on CNN. The Trump's final brief is due on Monday. It's like the late, great Tom Petty said, the waiting. Come on. It's the hardest part. Hardest. There you go. Good morning. Or as my friends say, GM, I'm here to check on my trial date. Thank you for your appeal, Mr. Trump. I'll just add this to the calendar. Check your trial date. Recognize that you are the divine ultra MAGA king and god emperor of the United States. Check this box, and it's gone. We are back, baby. Royce, we back, baby? We are back, we are back baby. And praise God. Because today is going to be a great day. Today is Friday, February 2nd, 2024. Trump's January 6th case has been removed from the DC docket. We are winning, baby! January 6th case, gone. And that's not all. Keep the applause going. Because Fannie Willis was just subpoenaed by the Judiciary Committee in the House. Big Fannie getting pounded, spanked, and destroyed by the House GOP. Speaking of somebody who has been destroying some Fannies, James O'Keefe will be joining the show, ladies and gentlemen. I, my name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. We got the energy to bring to you in this glorious news day, oh, we have so many good things to talk about this morning. That energy comes, of course, from the brigade, who we love, the sweet, salty army. And we're going to have so many, so many salt shakers to pour on today. But it also comes from what's inside of our cup. Our cup runneth over, not just with sodium, not just with the salt from the lib tears, but it also runneth over with blackout coffee. Blackout coffee is the coffee that we drink to keep us going. You can hear the ding-a-ling in the cup there. That is my icy, icy blackout coffee. I actually brew it the night before, make it iced in the morning, boom, ready to go. The world is in flames because of Joe Biden and the real president of the United States, Barack Obama. So make sure that you take a little step back and power yourself with delicious caffeine, all natural, uh, so that you have the energy to fight the communists. That's what we do here. We fight commies and we have to have the energy to do that because these people are driven by demonic energy and we have to be able to power through. So ladies and gentlemen, that is why I drink blackout coffee. Go to blackoutcoffee.com slash Benny. Use the coupon code Benny for 20% off your first order. Blackoutcoffee.com slash Benny. Be awake, not woke. <laughs> oh baby, there are people that are waking up in Washington DC this morning and they are seeing that Donald Trump's January 6th case has now disappeared. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, it's so delicious. The January 6th case against Donald Trump has been dropped from the court's public calendar in Washington, D.C. The case brought by special counsel Jack Smith and presided over by Obama judge Tanya Chicken currently has motions pending that are on appeal. Former President Donald Trump's March 4th trial date on charges plotting the overturn of the results of the 2020 election has been dropped from the public calendar. 
of the Federal Court of Washington, a sign that has long been anticipated and also a sign that they will not be able to go to trial before the 2024 election, something that would, of course, be so searingly brutal for the cabal of leftists that wish to take out Donald Trump. The salty, salty tears will flow. The salty tears will fill the streets with sodium. You won't be able to, there, there'll be no more snow. It'll be the cleanest, most beautiful streets ever. The salt shall melt the ice and the salt will overflow in Washington, D.C. Get ready. Ladies and gentlemen, the motion currently on appeal is brought by one of Trump's attorneys stating that he has pre, uh, presidential immunity from the charges as he was still in office at the time. Of course, this is a very important thing for our constitution. If you are going to be able to bring charges against presidents for what they do in office, then what are you going to do here? How are you going to, how are you going to run a country? Because the president does have to make decisions and we may not agree with all those decisions, but presidents have to make big time decisions. Here's a good example. Barack Obama, uh, Alex, find me uh, background on this. Barack Obama drone striked a teenager who's an American citizen killed him. Okay. Little kid got cute little photos on the internet. He's a American teenager. He was hanging out with bad dudes. Apparently his father was a bad guy. I don't actually know, but Barack Obama sends a drone. He did this to many people, but this one, this one happened to be an American citizen. He straight up killed the kid. And so we're going to charge him with murder of an American. Is that what we're going to do? Or like, so we're going to open up Barack Obama for the, um, here's the, here's the ACLU lawsuit. The ACLU is bringing a lawsuit. So we're going to charge Barack Obama with murder. Not, I mean, again, let's call for a full and thorough investigation about what happened, uh, on Barack Obama's property, but taking a step, taking a step back, ladies and gentlemen. We gonna call for an are we gonna charge Barack Obama with murder for this? Because he straight up killed a American teenager, young boy. Okay, what's the name of the boy? Let's roll through the article. ACLU has filed a lawsuit challenging the government's targeting of three U.S. citizens in a drone strike far from any armed conflict zone. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, there was a uh, U.S. citizens Anwar Alawaki is his name, uh, 16 years old. Oh, okay, got it. So constitution guarantees, obviously, uh, due process rights. Government can't just go murder you. And so we look forward to Barack Obama being charged with murder, among among many other things, okay? Among many other things. So th this is what we're opening ourselves up to. This is such a great argument. S uh, Smith took the motion to the Supreme Court asked them to rule on it quickly, but the court declined to do so, leaving the matter to the lower courts to decide this process has caused a delay in the trial that Jack Smith wanted to ram through the court system as quickly as possible. Chuck Kitten has said that the trial deadlines would be suspended by the motion brought by Trump as it moves through the appeals court. This could take months, if not years. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we find this particularly interesting. So what we are looking at here is Donald Trump on trial in Washington, D.C. for telling people to march peacefully and go peacefully to the United States Capitol. In fact, we, because we are archivists of the Internet and because we are alive and we notice things and that's our superpower on the show, we actually have the exact tweet that Donald Trump got kicked off Twitter for. Was it a tweet calling for riots or violence? No, no. In fact, it was Donald Trump calling for peace, love in the American way for people to go home and to be kind to police officers. We'll play you that tweet in just a second. But first, ladies and gentlemen, uh, here is the meltdown about the Smith case on MSNBC. Is this a, is this a uh, is this assault? Is this assault the libs ALX? Is this salty enough for us to salt these libs? Alex says, not really. Wait for later in the show. All right, fine. Okay, fine. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Smith's case nuked from space. Watch. And tonight, just hours ago, 
We got even more breaking news that makes that all the more important. Tonight, Jack Smith's federal election interference case just dropped off the D.C. court's calendar. Now, that case had originally been scheduled for March 4th, but now, due to delays caused by Trump's presidential immunity appeal, it looks like that date is off the books. Very much TBD. So that is huge news. So one of the friends of the show, Anna Paulina Luna, is saying that this has to do with her filing, saying that Jack Smith is unconstitutional. And this is very interesting. Within hours of my office sending a letter asking for Jack Smith to produce information regarding his investigation in the case against Trump to remove from the docket, Jack Smith owes it to the American people and Congress needs answers. So what exactly did she file? Let's go ahead and read. All documents and communications concerning your authority to impanel a grand jury in the United States District Court or the Southern District of Florida. All documents and communications concerning your authority to offer immunity. All documents and communications concerning your authority to return to seek either grand jury, including threaten to return an indictment through a target letter. All documents and communication concerning oversight of the Department of Justice regarding any of these topics. So a lot of this stems from a filing with the Supreme Court Ed Meese, old timer, you may remember him. He was the attorney general under Ronald Reagan. Ed Meese is straight up saying Jack Smith's unconstitutional. You can't have a special counsel who's not an employee of the Department of Justice. Jack Smith is not an employee of the Department of Justice. And so Jack Smith's office itself is totally and completely unconstitutional. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're waiting on the Trump video. Hold on. Get, get me that Trump video. Uh, like ALX. Hear me, man. Hear me, man. I need that. I need that Trump video, the tweet from Trump on January 6th. It's very, really important context. Not only is this entire case like completely based on a sham, but the entire the entire premise that Jack Smith could serve as a special as, 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 in this capacity is blatantly unconstitutional and in violation of the law, according to the former attorney general for Ronald Reagan, Ed Meese. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we are witnessing now in real time. Uh, true and complete and total collapse of the ar of the arguments against Trump. They're not even able to get their court dates. Do you realize how slow the judicial process works? Most of these J6ers are having to wait for years to get trials, and they're trying to smash the Donald Trump case through on like the, uh, on like the tightest timeline you've ever seen. Why? We all know why. They're trying to rig the election again. And they're trying to stop you from seeing the truth. The truth is that Donald Trump was actually the only guy that wanted peace on January 6th. In fact, the insurrection was staged by Nancy Pelosi and all of her little goblins. In a moment, I'm gonna play you proof that everything was actually centrally organized, an incredible PBS clip where they all just straight up admit it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's line up the evidence here. Cash Patel is on our show saying that, hey, at the DOD, Donald Trump demanded, authorized 10,000 to 20,000 different troops from the National Guard to stand guard at the Capitol on the date of January 6th. Nancy Pelosi said no. Muriel Bowser, the mayor of D.C., said no. Donald Trump can't order American tr troops somewhere because you're not allowed to do that, right? Not on American soil. That's called an in, 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 you know invasion, right? You can't order American troops against Americans. But Nancy Pelosi in D.C. could have requested those troops and allowed those troops to come in. Donald Trump, of course, said, march peacefully during the speech. And also, the initial breach of the, of the Capitol building was before Donald Trump was even done speaking. None of it lines up. Mix that with some of the footage, of course, obviously that we have inside the Capitol building, but also Stephen Sun, the chief of the police, saying that Nancy Pelosi wouldn't help him and wouldn't even pick up the phone. They waited until the building was breached, until they got their narrative in order to push, in order to like allow the building to be protected. It all adds up to just one massive op in order to entrap and yes, in order to create a narrative. We've done a lot of work on like the J6 pipe bomber 
bringing on a lot of experts to talk about that, that sloppy op. Amazing. Every bomber in American history has been found. Every single one of them, even the guy living in the woods without like any electronic connection at all. The Unabomber, like the guys that like, like everything was found, like DNA evidence, all like, we just can't find this one guy. And we have him on all this, all this camera footage. We just can't find this one guy. Yeah. Anyway, the narrative doesn't fit reality. Here's reality, ladies and gentlemen. This is the video that Donald Trump put out on the date of January 6th. And it's worth just bringing up again and again and reminding you this is the message Donald Trump had on the uh, uh, literally ongoing whilst people were peacefully wandering through the United States Capitol for the police to open as the police open up the doors for them. This is the message Donald Trump sent out. They deleted his account right after this message because they didn't want you to see the truth. This is the truth. I know you're hurt. We had an election that was stolen from us. It was a landslide election and everyone knows it, especially the other side. But you have to go home now. We have to have peace. We have to have law and order. We have to respect our great people in law and order. We don't want anybody hurt. It's a very tough period of time. There's never been a time like this where such a thing happened, where they could take it away from all of us, from me, from you, from our country. This was a fraudulent election, but we can't play into the hands of these people. We have to have peace. So go home. We love you. You're very special. You've seen what happens. You see the way others are treated that are so bad and so evil. I know how you feel, but go home and go home in peace. Go home and go home in peace. I know how you feel. Be polite to our cops. Be respectful to our police officers. Everyone be peaceful. How can you charge that man with insurrection? Also, how can you insurrect against yourself? Definitionally, insurrection is an armed militia trying to seize power from the government. Donald Trump is the government. Donald Trump was president for another 20 days. So he's trying to seize power from himself. It's amazing. Donald Trump isn't being charged with insurrection. Isn't that wild? Yet they're trying to strip him off the ballot because of insurrection. In, in none of these cases has Donald Trump been charged with sedition or insurrection. Because it actually is nonsensical. Again, how do you take power from yourself? Why would you order the military there to protect the process if you were trying to seize power? Why was nobody armed on January 6th? Why was the only person killed inside of the Capitol building on January 6th, an unarmed Trump protester who was murdered in cold blood by a undercover Capitol police officer who's clearly trigger happy, flinging and waving his gun around, murdered in cold blood, Ashley Babbitt, an American veteran, killed without warning. Man, those are little things they don't want you to know about that day. Teeny little things they don't want you to know. But if you pay close attention, and it's just, we're going to go really quickly through a people's history of what was actually going on because we, mm, man, we like, we just can't get this stuff out of our head. They can't charge Donald Trump with insurrection. And the vast majority of people, I've called out the hooligans, okay? I've called out the hooligans. I think most of them are Antifa. In fact, the Antifa guys are literally being charged. The federal government straight up sentenced a guy to seven felonies, who is a Antifa BLM person who was LARPing as a Trump supporter. We've covered that. They, people who behaved violently should be charged. This is the difference between me and the left. I can say whether we're in a red hat or black block, if you punch a cop, you should go to prison. Okay? That's the difference between us and the left. And we should, we should maintain that intellectual morality and that consistency. That's important. The vast majority of J6ers are just like innocent people who showed up and going, wow, what's this? A free tour of the Capitol? The cops just opened the door. I guess we're just going to walk in and hold our flags, which is what all the evidence shows. People holding their little flags and kind of like peacefully walking through the building. It's a great meme about this. We'll pull it for you. So what do these people get charged with? Trespassing. 
That's what they get charged with. Trespassing, which is crazy, right? Because it's a public building. We pay for it. Anyone can like go walk into the Capitol. You just got to walk into the Capitol. You can show up right now today and say, I want to tour the Capitol. You walk in. You go through a little thing. You get wanded down, right? And you get a tour of the Capitol. You can wander around. You can do that right now. So why would you ever think trespassing in the U.S. Capitol would be like the, like the big charge? That's what the vast majority of J6 charges are, okay? In fact, during January 6th, the last thing anyone would think is like trespassing at the U.S. Capitol. This is the big one. Except for <laughs> Fancy Nancy, who after 7 to 12 martinis that morning, decided to stare into the cameras and tell them with her little crooked, with her crooked little claw hand that she's been waiting for this trespassing at the Capitol. What a thing to say. What a crazy thing to say. So they will delete Donald Trump's Twitter account with 100 million followers for saying he wants to be peaceful. And then the Nancy Pelosi feels like she has an obligation to look into the camera and tell everyone that she's been waiting for trespassing at the Capitol. It's almost beyond belief. Luckily, we have the tape. Watch. Secret Service said they have dissuaded him from coming to Capitol Hill. They told him they don't have the resources to protect him here. So at the moment, he is not coming, but that could change. Oh, he comes. I'm going to punch him out. This oh, is my wow. I would pay to see that. I'm waiting for this for trespassing on the Capitol grounds. I'm going to punch him out. I'm going to go to jail. I'm going to be happy. Been waiting for this. Everybody focuses on the Donald Trump. I'm going to punch Donald Trump out. Nope, that's not the headline there. It's the, I've been waiting for this. Trespassing on the Capitol grounds? Lady, we own the Capitol. It's our bill. It's your building. Do you pay taxes? I pay taxes. I'm just like a dude. I'm an American. I'm just a dude, okay? I'm a dude. And I'm just like an American citizen. I pay taxes. And that building belongs to me, you witch. I'm not trespassing when I go to the U.S. Capitol. Nobody's trespassing. Every American has the right to walk right into the U.S. Capitol building. The way that you would do it is you go in to the visitor center, you walk through the security gate, and you're like, I want to see the U.S. Capitol. And they go, here you go. And then you go walk around the Capitol. You join a tour. You contact your member of Congress if you want to see some of the really cool stuff. But whatever. You're an American citizen. You have a right to, you have a right to go wander into that building. I will, obviously, I admit to you that January 6th, like, January 6th is not the typical way that people walk, walk through the building, but a lot of people showed up that day and was just like, well, the cops just opened the doors. Okay. I guess it's time to parade a little bit. And that is precisely what they did. Ladies and gentlemen, there's someone else who was parading around the Capitol. <laughs> it wasn't just Jay Sixers with their American flags. It was Nancy Pelosi. Here's a clip of Nancy Pelosi. Can we just play this beside me? Here's Nancy Pelosi literally waiting for her cameraman in order to like, what? so this was, of course, this is the most terrifying moment in American history, right? Here's Nancy Pelosi waiting, like literally pausing so that her cameraman can get the shot. Watch this. That's the camera woman. It's her daughter. Nancy stops so that her daughter can like, she holds up so that her daughter can literally like hit them angles <laughs> for the production. So while Nancy Pelosi is making sure that she is one, telling the cameras that she's been waiting for the number one charge for January Sixers, trespassing. How the hell would she know that? Also, this is, again, that's while, that's while January Sixers was ongoing. How pre-planned was this? While Nancy Pelosi was talking about how excited she was, for these insane charges that no one would have ever conceived of. Trespassing on your US government property, like trespassing in, an, in a building that you and I pay for, that we have a right to enter. Because we, it's we the people that actually run this place. So while talking about that, while like fetishizing that, and while waiting for the cameras 
while like jockeying so that her daughter, who's making a documentary on her that day, gets the right footage of her marching through the Capitol because she's really scared. There was a man named Stephen Sund who was in charge of the police. And he kept calling Pelosi during this time, screaming at her saying, please, for the love of God, give me the capacity to defend the building. We just want people to not break into the building. Well, I, I'm begging of you. We need help to make sure that we just maintain the struct integrity of the building, which of course I agree with. Nobody should break a window. Nobody should bust down a door. Nobody should ever punch a cop ever. I disavow it. Antifa, red hat, doesn't matter. A lot of these guys were Antifa. They, they literally went to jail. They're literally going to jail, these Antifa guys that were LARPing as Trump supporters. We can prove it now. Stephen Sund says, Stephen Sund says, I called Pelosi's office. I screamed, give me help. Nothing. Watch. Um, there was a number of um, requests. I went on January 3rd requesting uh, the National Guard from Paul Irving. That was the first request for the uh, for the National Guard. I then went to Mike Stinger, who's the Senate Sergeant Arms. Now, Paul Irving uh, is uh, politically appointed by Speaker Pelosi. Uh, he initially, when I asked for the National Guard on January 3rd, which was a uh, Sunday, it was the first day of the uh, new Congress, uh, he said specifically, quote, I don't like the optics. Uh, and besides, the intelligence didn't uh, support it. His concern for the optics, I believe, goes back to Pelosi's decision that, or um, statement that he, she referred to federal agents in uh, National Guard on the tra on streets of uh, America as stormtroopers. And I think she just didn't want the look of stormtroopers up on the hill. And then come January 6th, and I think what your, what your viewers don't under realize is the restrictions I have as the chief of police. I'm one of the only chiefs in the United States, I am the only chief in the United States that has a federal law, a law passed by members of Congress, that prevents me from calling in any federal resources, either in advance, uh, like I tried to do on January 3rd, or even while I'm under attack without going and getting the politically appointed uh, Sergeant Arms approval. So at 12.53, we're attacked on the west front of the Capitol. I'm watching my officers getting brutally beaten. I pick up the phone at 12.55, I call uh, MPD for assistance. They're our, our partner agency right, uh, right next door. And then at 12.58, I call Paul Irving, uh, Speaker Pelosi's appointee to the Capitol Police Board. 80 minutes, 80 minutes, Stephen Sund, the police chief. A lot of people have a lot of opinions about January 6th. The only person you should really listen to is the dude who is not a Democrat or a Republican who's in charge of the Capitol Police. It's the only guy we should really be listening to for the real story about January 6th. And he says, I called and I called and I called and nothing. Plus, he wouldn't talk to me. She wouldn't even pick up the phone. And now we can see what Pelosi was actually doing, wandering the halls, making a movie about herself. You can literally see, we have the tape. So while Stephen Sund is begging for reinforcements, which I would totally, like, which Donald Trump tried to send days ahead of time, which I totally endorse, nobody wants the imagery of January 6th. No matter who was in the audience, feds, Antifa, P, you know, like guys that were behaving, hooliganism, hooligans that were behaving incorrectly. Nobody wanted the Capitol to be broken into. Me first, chiefly among them. But like, as you see the process play out, you can see that the people that allowed the Capitol to be broken into were Nancy Pelosi. That's what the chief of police says. The chief of police literally says it actually here. This is an important clip. Let's actually play this. Chief police actually straight up says, if this is a single person's failure, it's Nancy Pelosi's because she refused to take my call. She refused to secure the building. Now, why would that be? I've been waiting for this. Trespassing at the Capitol. Why is Nancy Pelosi so happy on January 6th? You may just ask that question. Why is Nancy Pelosi so excited? She's like giddy, like a schoolgirl, actually. Chief police, the only man you should listen to here. Here he is. Speaker of the House in charge of security at the Capitol? 
So you have the politically appointed Capitol Police Board that's put uh, in place by, you have uh, the Sergeant Arms that's put in place by Pelosi, you have the uh, Senate Sergeant Arms that's put in place by the uh, Senate leadership, and then you have the architect of the Capitol that's put in place by the, uh, the president. So you have three voting members. I'm a non-voting member. I'm the only non-politically appointed non-voting member, uh, and that's kind of how the security oversight works. Uh, but it was Paul Irving who immediately said, I'm going to run it up the chain. I'll never forget that, run it up the chain. His chain of command ends at Speaker Pelosi. And I had to wait 71 minutes to finally get an approval at 2, at uh, 2 9 p.m. before I could finally reach out and start calling in federal assistance. 71 minutes when my men and women fought on the, uh, brutally, I mean, fought heroically to prevent the uh, Capitol from being defended, I mean, from being penetrated. And it took 80 minutes before the first window was broken. So those were critical, essential minutes that we we're losing. 80 minutes. Nancy Pelosi refused to pick up this man's call. This dude is the chief of police. Where's Nancy Pelosi's insurrection charge? Speaking of police, what an interesting thing to see the behavior of police. Now that we have the footage, you can actually watch the behavior of police on January 6th. Here's a bunch of cops fist bumping an arrested protester. Does anybody have an explanation for this? Here's a dude. He's a he's a he's a protest. He's a MAGA protester insurrectionist. He's going to be uncuffed by the cops, and then he's going to fist bump them. And they're all going to say, "What's up, bro? What up, dude? What up, my G? Go have yourself a latte. Go enjoy your day. Take lots of selfies. See ya. What's this? What is this? What is this footage? Is this the, you, can you find footage like this on September 11th? I'm not trying to be macabre here or grotesque. Kamala Harris and Joe Biden say that this is the same day as September 11th. The same thing as September 11th, okay? Nor am I trying to impugn these cops. Many people speculate that maybe this guy is an undercover fed. There are tons of them there. Maybe this guy's an undercover fed. Maybe they knew him. It's like a buddy from police academy, you know? Or maybe he's just a, like maybe just like a Trump guy who, and the cops are like, okay, we got to walk you to the door. Come on, come on, walk you to the door. Okay. See you later, pal. Go eat a pastrami and rye. Great place down the way called the tune in little diner. Go have yourself some mozzarella sticks. Like something's going on here, but let me tell you something. It's not September 11th. That's not what's going on here. The left lights call this September 11th or Pearl Harbor. Um, let me tell you what, if you had a grandfather that served in World War II, I bet you did. Shout yourself out in the comment if you did. Do you have a grandfather or grandmother that served in World War II? Um, a lot of those sweet souls are no longer with us. Um, they should be pretty furious. If they were, if, if the people that were at Pearl Harbor saw the similar, like saw that this is being compared to Pearl Harbor and that this day is being compared to Pearl Harbor, this right here. This is your Pearl Harbor. The, the, I've seen footage of Pearl Harbor. Not a lot of cameras back then. Seen footage of Pearl Harbor. Don't look like this. Seen a lot of footage of September 11th. A lot of those people are still around. And uh, it doesn't look like this. Okay? This is not what the Twin Towers looked like. But this is what the left is trying to fuse together in all of our minds. They're trying to say that this, look at this, little grandma, Mima, Mima and Pop Pop with their Gadsden flag waving to the cops, as you just saw right there, wobbling through peacefully the halls of the Capitol. Many of them taking selfies, posing for pictures. Hey, look at this. Like you would on a tourist group, okay? Let BLM or Antifa into the White House. Let, let me know what happens. Let BLM or Antifa like march through the White House like they tried to do on May 2020 when they stormed the gates of the White House and tried to murder President Trump, which is what they did. This is why they took Donald Trump down to the secure bunker, because hundreds of Secret Service officers and police were injured as leftist orcs stormed the White House, like it was helms deep, and tried to kill the president. That's Now, that's an actual insurrection, by definition. We're going to kill the elected leader, and we're going to seize power. That's the, act, that's the actual insurrection. But we've all it's all been manipulated. Here you can see armed officers of the law, armed police officers, letting in the protesters. I know this 
entrance well. I used to work in the Capitol. Have a Capitol security badge, in fact. I would I had full access to every virtually every room in the Capitol because I had a a literal press pass got me everywhere, right? I know exactly where this is. And I don't envy these cops because these cops have been failed by Nancy Pelosi. Nobody should have broken glass. Nobody should have entered the building like without going through the actual entrances. I know exactly where this is. And here are the police officers armed, letting these people in along with like, like literally escorting Jacob Chansley while they're all armed to the floor of the Senate. Somebody's going to need to explain this. Here they are. They've been asked to leave. You know, what's crazy is that an insurrectionist, if you're staging a coup, um, the way you end the coup, French Revolution or whatever, the way they end the coup in like some African nation or whatever, you know, some Caribbean island when there's a when there's a coup d'etat, um, the coup d'etat doesn't typically end when like the cops are like, go home, please. And everyone's like, oh, shucks. Okay. Got to make sure we stop at Walgreens on the way to get some Burt's Bees because my lips are chapped. That's normally not how coups end. But that's exactly what you're witnessing here. And this is what they're going to, this is the, this is the case that they brought against Donald Trump, that this somehow was an insurrection and that Donald Trump deserves to be locked up forever. Actually does deserves to like not never be allowed to run for president again because of this. And so it's important to, it's important to obviously put the truth out there. We love putting the truth out there in the form of memes. Um, we hate doing like super dark, uh, shows. We like to have a little laughter with this. There was an incredible meme that was shared by Elon Musk that went thermonuclear. This meme was shared uh, by Elon Musk. He posted it against Chuck Schumer. This is so good. I don't, I don't know if we had the actual original tweet, but Elon Musk shared this meme. Chuck Schumer was like bitching and mewling about January 6th and trying to continue the narrative orchestrated lie about January 6th. And Elon Musk shared this meme going, uh, should we delete this video? <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy the, uh, the January, the January 6th tour of the Capitol. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the U.S. Capitol building. If you've joined us today for the insurrection, please make sure you pick up a promotional leaflet on the way in, stay inside the safety cordons at all times, and if you get lost, speak to one of our Capitol Police officers, they'll be sure to point you in the right direction. And be sure to set aside a little time today to join us for some insurrection activities, including our photography tour, our fancy dress competition, and have a go on our climbing wall. But don't forget those safety ropes. And I've now received the results of our fancy dress competition. The winner today is Jacob Chansley. That's Mr. Jacob Chansley. If you could report to your nearest Capitol Police officer, they'll be sure to give you your prize, a guided tour of the building. And all that's left is for me to thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the insurrection. Wherever possible, please try to clean up after yourselves. Don't forget to visit the souvenir shop on the way out. And feel free to join us on the outdoor terrace for Nancy Pelosi's Insurrection Soiree. Grab yourself a light refreshment and enjoy the music of our very own Fancy Dress Competition winner. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is what Elon posted. Do you want us to remove this video? Can you show, uh, Rose, can you show us the, the above tweet? So he's responding to Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer, ow, oh, it's, it's shameful that January 6th security footage is being shared. Trump's big lie. Do you want us to remove this video? <laughs> what an own. Did he get ratioed here? So he got ratioed, 24,000 comments there. And then, and then Elon Musk, this video just goes absolutely thermonuclear. 20 million views on that meme. The great Steven voiceover. Well done. Well done. Why is this so important for them to protect this narrative? 
because this is the manufactured narrative that they centrally or organized, planned, and orchestrated against Donald Trump, against you and me, against our movement, obviously to criminalize the American people, but more importantly, to stop Donald Trump from running for president. How centrally organized was it? How pre-planned was this? Oh, baby. You know, the interesting thing about evil is that it just can't shut the F up. They have to like, evil like has to scream its evils from the mountaintops. Like these people can't leave well enough alone. In a PBS documentary, uh, the guy who protected Epstein, uh, a, a producer for ABC, literally explains, his name's James Goldstein. He literally explains that he wanted to use January 6th as a mini series made for TV mini series and then got the chance to do so because of Nancy Pelosi. Oh, it's too good. They literally admitted on tape. Are we the only people putting all this together? Fine. Dude, watch this guy. Watch this guy from ABC News be like, and then I and then I'm I'm going to make a TV mini series about January 6th for the January 6th committee. It's all going to be orchestrated for television. <laughs> scripted watch thompson's committee had gathered a trove of information the challenge what to do with it the one thing that we knew was the information that we have is compelling the thing we needed to do was tell that to the american people in a compelling way so that's why we brought in a former president of abc news yeah i got a call pretty much out of the blue um, from the January the 6th committee. They wanted they wanted a storyteller. And while they were brilliant, they were brilliant lawyers, storytelling for a mass audience is not what they do. To bring in a guy like this who would think outside the box really did prove to be fruitful. And it was Goldston who really began to envision this as, in a way, a kind of mini-series, that there would be you know, sort of nine episodes and that these episodes would tackle particular themes. Attack on the Capitol. The first hearing was primetime television. As the nation is about to witness a defining moment, the first hearing before the country, the results of the January 6th investigation. This is an extraordinary moment in American history. When it came to that first hearing, we knew how high the stakes were. Um, correction, I got his name wrong. James, James Goldstun. James Goldstun. You know, I'm, not, I'm a storyteller. And so uh, we've got to make a mini series out of it. Bottle water. Bottle water. Got to make a mini series. It's like a TV show. My water filled with salt of tears. Right down my noggin. All fish and chips gets brought in. We did a little background research into James Goldston. Very interesting here. People telling me that Piers Morgan's gonna be very mad at my British impression, that's fine. Yeah. We asked Piers some interesting questions last time we were on his show. James Goldston is an executive at ABC News. James Goldston is the man who killed the bona fide, truthful, honest, and bombshell reporting about Bill Clinton and Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, yes. And we have that on tape, too. Let me set the table for you here. So Nancy Pelosi is looking for a hatchet man in order to protect her narrative in order for Democrats to psyop the American people into a lie. Well, who does she go to? The person who has successfully been able to, through his power in network television, protect Democrats with a psyop and control a narrative that would, le that would mean destruction for the elites. Bill Clinton going to Epstein Island, like a billion times, 27 times that we know of. James Goldston is the guy who killed the ABC News report 
by Amy Rohrbach about Epstein Island and Bill Clinton and the royal family and the girls and the victims. This was killed by this man to control the narrative. And luckily, we have the tape. Watch. I've had the story for three years. I've had this interview with Virginia Roberts. We would not put it on the air. Um, first of all, I was told, who's Jeffrey Epstein? No one knows who that is. This is a stupid story. Um, then the palace found out that we had her whole allegations about Prince Andrew and threatened us a million different ways. Um, we were so afraid we wouldn't be able to interview Kate I and Will say, that we that also quashed the story. Yeah. And then um, and then Alan Dershowitz was also implicated in because of the planes. She told me everything. She had pictures. She had everything. She was in hiding for 12 years. We convinced her to come out. We convinced her to talk to us. Um, it was unbelievable what we had. Clinton. We had everything. I, I tried for three years to get it on to no avail, and now it's all coming out, and it's like these new revelations, and I freaking had all of it. I, I, I'm so pissed right now. Like, every day I get more and more pissed because I'm just like, oh my God. We, it was, um, what, what we had was unreal. Other women backing it up. Hey, yep. Brad Edwards, the attorney, three years ago saying, like, aunt, like, we, there will come a day when we will realize Jeffrey Epstein was the most prolific pedophile this country has ever known. And I had it all three years ago. The most prolific pedophile this country's ever known. This being spoken by Amy Rohrbach, somebody who's who's lost her job now because of tapes like that, who had a, who probably doesn't agree with me on anything politically, but God bless her. There's no, she's not a MAGA supporter. She's not a Trump supporter. But God bless her for actually doing the investigation to protect these women from these monsters. Who cares what their political affiliation is? James Goldston does. And he's the producer that protected Bill Clinton, killed the Epstein story. You just heard the reporter. We had everything. We had Clinton. We had the victims. We connected them all. And my network, she says, protected the biggest pedophile in world history. That's her words, not mine. They're true. And who was the guy doing the protecting? Mr. Hatchet Man. Mr. Man that gets brought in to tell the narrative on January 6th. To continue the narrative of January 6th. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the narrative they wish to continue. Here's Kamala Harris stating exactly the policy of the Democrat Party when it comes to the official narrative of January 6th. Well, which is why we're going to do hit this hard and do a lot more reporting on this, actually. Because this is sloppily done, and it's actually beginning to collapse. They're moving into containment about this. You notice they're not talking about January 6th as much? Because they're realizing that the narrative now is crumbling uh, faster than, like, lone gunman JFK narratives. This is the official narrative that they demand you believe. Kamala saying it as it's written. Not only a place on our calendars, but a place in our collective memory. December 7th, 1941, September 11th, 2001, and January 6th, 2021. Hmm. <laughs> September 11th, Pearl Harbor, and January 6th. That's what they need. And ladies and gentlemen, as the case gets ripped from the DC docket, well, so goes their narrative. So let us bring our sledgehammers. Let us bring truth. And the truth shall set you free. Now, a little bit of breaking news. Uh, we were a moment late to today's show. A little bit of breaking news. The truth. The Truth brought to you there by Project Veritas and the great James O'Keefe. James O'Keefe will be joining the show, actually, in just a moment. The Truth, again, brought forward by our reporting on January 6th and many others. And now The Truth is starting to hit someone, direct, spank someone, in fact, punish them in the big fanny. Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen. We have not tired of our big fanny lover boy puns. And as a father of three, I will take any dad joke that I can get. Is Big Fanny facing hard times? 
Will Big Fanny face a hard time? Is Big Fanny about to get spanked hard by the GOP in Congress? Oh, baby. She was just subpoenaed by the House Oversight Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, Fanny Willis just got the subpoena of a lifetime by Jim Jordan, who is like the world's master at this. This is all coming crumbling down in real time. It is a special moment. Be awake during this moment. Every case against Trump is beginning to like crack and crumble. And now the hunters have become the hunted. Please watch. Coming up 18 minutes past the hour now, House Judiciary Chair uh, Jim Jordan apparently subpoenaed Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis for documents after three attempts that he had made to get her to respond to request voluntarily to no avail. Uh, the subpoena is now for documents, not an appearance now, related to the Fulton County DA's use and misuse, allegedly, of federal funds. Willis is under the microscope uh, for this alleged improper romantic relationship with a special prosecutor that she hired for the Georgia election interference case. It's the big RICO case now stacked up against former President Donald Trump and many others. So we will see how that turns out for that Jim Jordan. Ooh, baby. Fanny Willis charged Trump in Georgia. Now she may be facing federal RICO charges. Isn't that incredible how that works? Isn't that amazing? We always talk about God's justice on this program and how all we need to do is wait and there shall be justice for evil people in the end. And it looks like Big Fanny's going to take it right in the end. We'll see. We shall see, ladies and gentlemen. There is one man, however, who is a such a truth teller, in fact, that, well, earlier this week, he thought he might be suicided. He had to tweet, I'm not suicidal. Oh, boy. Is he, is, is he the same guy that revealed? The, the joke goes, I have evidence that I have evidence that will lead to the arrest of Hillary Clinton. And then that per, that person gets disappeared, right? That's how the meme goes. Well, James O'Keefe in the aforementioned Epstein tapes, he's the guy who broke those. James O'Keefe is a man behind some of the greatest revelations uh, in American history about how our powerful operate behind the scenes, the narratives they wish to construct. And James O'Keefe does the actual job of reporting, which is to expose those narratives as lies, if they are lies, in fact, and to expose the regime and the power vectors behind it. He has done what I would argue possibly his best work this week. You know it's his best work because the media refused to talk about it. And that's why we are honored to welcome James O'Keefe to the show. James. Okay, good. Oh, thank God. It is James. Hey, ben, I thought we doing? I thought you'd be I, wearing a I thought you'd be wearing a pair of glasses. I wouldn't actually know who you were. <laughs> yeah, the, the, that was quite a disguise, don't you think? Just uh, hair color and glasses. I'm still reeling from that line, Big Fanny will take it in the end. I, I was just uh I like that. Um but yeah, I think I I agree with you. I think this is probably my favorite my favorite investigation that I've ever done and I think because it involves the White House and because I was the one recording it, it adds a whole many layers of irony. We've played some of your previous reporting and we played these clips yesterday on the show, James, uh, from your most recent uh, reports on the White House from inside of the White House. But I would like to have you sort of set the table for anyone who hasn't seen the footage as to what the newest sting was with the O'Keefe Media Group. Thank you, Benny, and thanks for having me on. This is the second most watched video I've ever done in 20 years. Um, this guy is in the executive office of the White House. Um, he works in cybersecurity. He goes to Harvard, went to Georgetown, and he's a fairly high up level, deep state, administrative state employee. He supervises the State Department and USAID. In fact, he worked at the State Department for four years, and I met with him. Uh, and all I did was put on glasses and and dye my hair orange. And uh, he, he started and initially he was a little cold, but um, he started singing like a bird. He talked about things that we nothing would surprise your audience. Nothing. Nothing I do surprises anybody, but it confirms 
what we might know to be true. He said that they tried to get rid of Kamala Harris, but they can't do so because she is, quote, a black woman and that she hemorrhages black staff. What he what he meant by that is that all of the black staff that work for Kamala don't like her and they quit in Moss, his words. He also said he confirmed Joe Biden's cognitive decline. It's very rare, Benny, to get a Democrat or a White House official to say this on the record. I, I don't even think we've ever seen a White House official, certainly not on video, say it. We've we, anonymous sources have said it. And finally, he 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 says a lot of things, but he also said he met with Michelle Obama. He was in the, the room with Michelle Obama, and he says that she doesn't want to run because she doesn't want to go through what her husband went through. So that was very interesting. And uh, and then, of course, I take off my disguise and say, what type of clown show you boys running over there in the White House to be meeting with James O'Keefe? And there's this moment of absolute shock. Uh, and at first, he doesn't really know what's going on. And then he goes into talking point mode, Benny. He's like, well, the White House takes cybersecurity very seriously. It's a really <laughs> remarkable day. <laughs> <laughs> they're so good at they're so good at this. <laughs> I mean, really, that's, that's my. It's a wonder moment. why China and Iran and Russia are able to hack our country every single day. That, that's another. So the, the, the my, my staff and I were saying, like, if I get nothing out of this guy, just the fact that he met with me is a story. Because I'm a journalist, so my, my job is to get the information so the public can know it. But what if I were a spy? What if I were a Chinese spy or a Russian spy? I mean, is this how easy it is to infiltrate the White House? Um, right. What if what is it being blackmail? It's not. It's not my purpose. But what if someone else was was doing it for that reason? That's a. That, that's probably the biggest story here. You can buy state secrets for tacos at happy hour and a margarita with a salted rim. Uh, it was uh, one it, glass of wine. I don't even think he finished his glass of wine. People think, oh, you got him drunk. No, he drank half a glass of red wine. I had chicken fingers, and that was it. Wow. Now, did you meet on, did you meet on Tinder or Grindr or how did you reach out to this person? Do you, can you reveal these, these uh, trade secrets? Yeah, it was actually Tinder. Um, and, and, uh, he had a LinkedIn account. He did all of our background, you know, I, I don't want to get into every single thing that we do behind the scenes, but we, of course we, 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 you know, nowadays you can pretty easily using open source, um, programs identify who someone is and verify who someone is but on his linkedin account his facebook account his instagram he, he said that he worked in cybersecurity and in the white house able to verify this and then we, we break the story wednesday afternoon and he instantly takes everything down but not before i went through those and captured them and took pictures of them benny we don't know his status at the white house not one single reporter has asked a question of the White House. This video has gotten viewed like 25 million times. Um, and I think what you said is correct. The fact that they say nothing, they can't criticize it, means that it is a, is a pretty big blow uh, to, the, to the talking points that they have. And there's a, there's a gap between how people in the government talk on the record and how they just talk normally. They yes. just, they, and, and as long as there is that gap between the Potemkin aspect, the, the state aspect of the official record, and what the truth is, there'll always be ripe opportunities for people like me to come in and expose it. Yes. And so you said something very prescient, which is that this doesn't shock us that Joe Biden is suffering uh, early dementia style symptoms. Everybody sees it. And it doesn't shock us that everyone hates Kamala Harris. It's pretty obvious, actually. It's just pretty shocking that everyone in the White House is in on the lie, yeah. right? Like they talk a lot about the big lie. Yes. They just do dropped the Trump case from the docket in DC. But it seems like the big lie is that they all are using Joe Biden as a warmed over corpse for power. They all know yeah, they, he's not, he, he does not deserve the presidency. He, he does not, and neither does Kamala. Yeah. There's this, this, this sort of, there's this artifice that pervades our. Everyone knows this, of course. We, it's like society is like this. There's, we know there's an artifice. We know it's all phony. We, the, the, you know, the, but the, I forgot her name, but the press secretary at the White House, you know, and cringe even here. Jo it, it, that her and Joy Reid on MSNBC, they all just they they talk with these ridiculous, phony talking points, and we all sort of participate in it, and that's just how the world is. But as long as there's a gap between those talking points and the reality, 
then people in bars and restaurants will talk to their friends and boyfriends and dates differently than the talking point. And I, and I go to this moment, this was the video I released yesterday. This is the second video where I take off my glasses. I'm like, what are you doing? Chris Hansen style. What are you doing? And he goes, uh, 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 and I say, what type of cybersecurity operation you guys running over there? And he goes, we are running a very good cybersecurity operation. The White House has just enforced executive. And it was like, but five minutes ago, this is not how you were talking. So, <laughs> so I, people say, how do you get? The, so this is the, the two questions, I guess. How do you get these guys to do these? Things? It's not that I don't have any special powers. It's just that these are just people, human beings don't talk like an official North Korea style talking point. They talk just normally when you when you open. And the other thing I'll say is that this man is not stupid. He's not a low level guy. Um, he's fairly high up yeah. and he did try to turn it around on me. He's like, so where did you go to college? And I said, <laughs> and I was like, I'm not in, you're like James Bond. I'm like, I'm nothing. And so people are very narcissistic and they like to talk about themselves. And it's amazing what people will tell you if you just express genuine interest in them, which is another thing that they don't do in Washington, D.C. They don't ask questions about you. They're very interested in themselves. They have grandiose images of themselves. And this guy was no exception. What a profound point, because they all believe that they are living inside of their own Aaron Sorkin miniseries and that they are the star of that series. I've lived in Washington for 15 years. This is absolutely the attitude that permeates the city. The not using their own narcissism against themselves is genius, James. Yeah, there's this one moment in the tape. I, I, I usually don't put the tradecraft in. I'll just put the content in. But there was one moment when he asked me, so you went to Rutgers. By the way, I actually did go to Rutgers. He goes, you majored in journalism. I, I did do journalism in college. And I'm like, but that's not interesting. I mean, you went to Oxford, Harvard. You're just like a movie. And he goes, oh, stop. <laughs> he just, he just, I mean, turned it right back around. I mean, because I'm trying to show people that's exactly right, Benny. As long as the society is rotten, as long as people are so, um, uh, for lack of a better word, narcissistic, as long as people preach one thing in public and say another in private, it'll be relatively easy for me to go get these stories. And other people saying, Benny, that, well, that does this doesn't matter because it's not, not a scoop because we already know this to be true. And I would say to that, most Americans don't really pay attention. You guys do, your audience does, a few million people do. But I think that this moves the needle in so far as people who, who you know, they, they kind of believe the official talking point when they see something like this go, whoa. So a lot of people... It, it, it will move the needle. And again, it's another thing to get them to say it. It's another thing to know something, but to actually see it verified is a di an entirely different thing. So, and this is the point. I mean, I think it, that it's been written, the, the fact that everyone hates Kamala has been quite written, right? Like, th like that's, you can see the people leaving her office and you can see the black people on her staff leaving her office in droves. So that's been reported out. What is a firm, like line that shall not be crossed is Joe Biden doesn't have dementia, right? Mm -hmm. Joe Biden's fit as a fiddle. Jill mm -hmm. Biden, she gets angry and very snipey when somebody asks about Joe Biden's health and mental health. She, she bristles and gets upset and goes on the attack, right? And, and so that's a, that is the fortress that you're not allowed to penetrate, okay? Joe Biden's uh, mental stability. And even though we all see it and all the polling shows uh, that that is something that the American people are deeply bothered about. That is the that is the white the, that's the White Castle Kingdom that you're not allowed to storm. Joe Biden's peak of health, right? And so I think that this is actually the biggest news out of the interview. If you don't mind, I'm just going to play a short clip here, yeah, please. where the man admits, though the man straight up admits, and this is not just a man. This is a man who works inside the executive office. This is uh, all, also, by the way, most federal employees that work in the executive branch, uh, a, a thousand work outside of the executive office, like for every one that works in the executive office. So this is a very high, this is about as high ranking of official as you can possibly get saying, yep, yep. We all know that Joe Biden is straight up early onset dementia. Watch. What Biden is doing, I love his policies. I just, I'm just seeing, I'm just witnessing, it just looks, it's a bad look. I mean, he can't, struggles to talk. Yes. And 
Yes, he's no Barack Obama. Is he, is he going to be the, the nominee? Yes. And she will be the vice president nominee. Yeah, I don't... There was a debate about removing her from the ticket, but sadly they didn't. <sighs> I agree with everything Biden is doing. It's just his cognitive ability. Like, I have yeah. a grandfather who has... He's 91. Okay. And Joe Biden is worse than my grandfather who has dementia. Yeah. You know, he's sort oh, know. of walking yeah. like this. And he's sort of like... You know, and I, and I think that voters are going to look at that, oh, yeah, and it's going to hurt I us. I, I think that independents are going to look at that, and they're going to be like, I can't deal with that. But with him, I yeah, mean, I know. I know. he's got I know. dementia. Um, yeah, well, I don't think he has that clinically yet, no, yeah. um, but he's definitely slowing down. Well, my question is, are the people, like your colleagues or the White House or whatever, do they get it? Do they know that? I think that they probably do, but no one in modern history has ever said, like, we're not going to renominate the president for a second term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That just hasn't happened. Like, do they know that he has those issues? I think so. But they're not willing the to say it. Shows it. And, they're not willing to say correct. it publicly. The polling shows it. The polling's yeah. up on screen here, James. And he's now admitting, of course, obviously, that everyone is able to say the king has no clothes, the sky is blue, two plus two equals four. We're the ones living in the big lie. Yeah, it's just that poll doesn't say 100%, it says 68. So 32% of people don't have worries about Biden's decline. And perhaps that's, that's the audience that this video speaks to. Because they don't believe you or your audience are conservatives or pundits or commentators, but maybe... Do they believe someone that works in the executive office of the White House? Uh, and I thought uh, the quote, I think the quote, they're the lead journalistically. And that what you just played was they can't say it publicly. Whenever someone says that to me, that's when I go ding, ding, ding. That's when I'm like, OK, please, please be recording. Please get that. Please say, could you say that again? Just the way you said it. Whenever they <laughs> say we can't we can't say or do thing. We, we can't do anything. We're not willing to acknowledge that we're doing. We can't. That, that, to me, is always the story, because if there's one thing, Benny, that I think voters don't like, it's being lied to. That's a universal axiom, regardless of your politics or, you know, your stances on immigration or abortion or whatever. You, you don't no one likes being lied to. It's the lying part. Why do you have to lie? Why do you have to say something over here and then say the opposite? And that admission is so devastating whenever we get that part on camera, just like with the Pfizer guy a year ago, he said, don't tell anybody this. And of course, that's the moment. I just want to make sure that my watch is fully charged here. <laughs> just, uh, hold on. Would you, I'm just adjusting my glasses. Would you, would you mind? Glasses. You'll Wait, always it, see me. You'll always see me look down at the equipment when they say that just to make <laughs> sure and double check that it's functioning properly. So, so is this the James O'Keefe um, Halloween outfit? If you're looking for an easy Halloween outfit? You know, you know, I, 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 we got a lot of disguises, but I always, one of my rules is you, the way you carry yourself, your manner always matters more than your disguise. So the undercover work, I try to, if I'm using an alias or I'm using a cover, it has to mirror pretty closely who I am. So mm -hmm. in this case, I, I wasn't technically a journalist. I said I worked for a printing company, which is not false. And I, and I publish brochures. Also not false. I do that. Just so that I could I could speak um, authentically and honestly about what I do, because people, you know, when you just create a totally fake story, sometimes it doesn't come across as authentically. Uh, this is a very important, I think, meme for the you know for the history of the internet, obviously for the country. Uh, this is James O'Keefe. Oh boy, this is what. <laughs> oh, MG, tell me more. Um, uh, you know that's. <laughs> <laughs> this may be next, but uh, these are the memes are flowing. We have a couple the memes here. Are flowing. We have the a couple here flowing. for you, James O'Keefe. James O'Keefe, but it's an undercover gay man. <laughs> there was this one. There was this one. Totally. Uh, show, like, Hi, 20, it's me. Totally not James O'Keefe. <laughs> like three years ago, like I know. Let's let that, that one sink in. When twenty three, like John John Stewart was hired by this is like two thousand year two thousand. I was in high school, and there was a commercial and. and and John Stewart was being hired by the Daily Show. And he's like, I am not gay. So I remember this commercial because I am Benny. I am zero percent gay, but um, I'll take one for the team. I'll, I'll do what I got to do to get the story. 
Um, but uh, that confident in my masculinity, I, I will do whatever it takes. But honestly, uh, we don't we don't you know touch these people. We don't even hold their hand. They, we just it's just about asking about them and expressing genuine interest. I like that one. It says James O'Keefe, but as undercover gay man, it's literally just me and glasses. It's just I, you I and like glasses. So, like so that. what do you think is gonna? I, I did want to ask one very serious question because uh, you went you went thermonuclear before dropping this video, which is quite unique. The videos had right. twenty got twenty million views, but your tweet saying I'm gonna be suicided potentially for this. Um, yeah. Are, what, yeah. Why, why did you tweet that? And um, like, do do you have credible knowledge that there is a threat on your life? Well, I, I would say that I haven't released everything yet. I mean, I have tapes in my inventory, and and the reason I wrote that to get serious for a moment because some people thought it was like melodramatic because everyone's always asking me this question, Benny. Like, why aren't you afraid? I'm afraid for you. Do you fear for your life? I mean, it's overwhelming. It's nonstop. Now, I don't actually feel that. I don't walk around going, gee, I'm so scared that someone's going to hurt me. I don't, I don't live my life that way. I never frankly have, but I took the time. I took a few hours to write a very carefully worded note from the heart. I, I wrote that every word I thought very carefully because I wanted that to be kind of like my, my opus in response to anybody who asked me about fear. I am tired of people saying, James O'Keefe, you need to be afraid. You, why aren't you afraid for your life? They're going to kill you. I'm like, all right, listen, I'm not suicidal. I, I'm not, but I'm also prepared to die. In other words, I, I don't fear death. I believe in what I do. I'm passionate about what I do. I would say I'm more akin to an artist than a political person. And that message was designed to be sent to people to say, you know, listen, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian guy. I'm, I, I don't know what's going to happen to me. And that's not up to me. What's up to me is to do my job and to find other people who will do it alongside me. And, um, you know, to quote Clarence Thomas, who said it so eloquently in 91, if they're going to kill me, they're going to kill me. And, and he's alive and well, and, and he's doing pretty well right now. Nothing makes them angrier than somebody flourishing. In spite of everything that they've thrown at you, you continue to flourish in the same vein as Clarence Thomas. Tucker Carlson comes to mind. Donald Trump comes to mind that you can't kill an idea and you can't right. defeat an army of happy warriors. And that's what you're creating, James. Well, the the, 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 the most important part of that um, post, Benny, I thought was the enemy, like the Viathan, the government, the White House, this, the, this agency, the IRS, all the things I'm exposing. That's not really the enemy. The enemy is the people amongst us who are weak, who are, who are, who betray us. I mean, look at Tucker, he was fired by Fox. And that was very, very uh, near when I was fired by the company I founded. And, and that's the enemy, not, not the thing that we're fighting. Cause it's, it's the people who do nothing that, that paragraph right there. I mean, the enemy cannot betray you, Benny, only people that you think are good can mm. can can hurt you can can mm. really wound you which was what happened to me a year ago things like envy things like greed uh, love of money love of power and frankly the worst one weakness weakness mm. and and cowardice that that surrounds me like a cloud i, I deal with mm. it every day i fight it every hour of the day that's the thing that i'm fighting so for the people who say aren't you afraid i say i'm fighting those things Let's let's get let's get beyond those things and find the people with the strength and the willingness to go do the thing alongside me. That's why I wrote that. I know that Andrew Breitbart is in heaven, smiling down on your work. He is someone who has inspired so many of us. In fact, we just wouldn't really have a movement. I I wonder what a move. I fear, I shiver thinking about what our movement would look like without Andrew Breitbart. Even though I think he's been passed. Uh, for a decade now. And, yeah. and yet here we are, like, here we are talking about the profound effect he's had on, on us. Um, and what he always said is that politics is downstream of culture. You have to be able to create something that people see and that it affects them. And it's powerful. It means something to their lives. And so here we go, James, congratulations. One of your biggest bangers. I wonder if it'll be the biggest video you ever I, make. My I think it's personally, I, it's my the favorite one I've done since college. This is my favorite one because of the fact the guys in the white house and the fact that he didn't recognize me it is a it is a commentary on human nature it is a it's a security breach jack Prasevic told me this is a security breach and it's just funny 
it, it's it's uh it's it confirms everything we know to be true but we can see it the truth matters and benny sometimes people just need to see to hear it from your friend but to see it with your own eyes it makes all the difference in the world that's right. 23 million views. 23 million views. Man, I used to work in cable news. That's like more than all the prime times of all the networks combined. So yes. screw them, you know, like F them, yeah. right? Like if they don't cover this, which they haven't, as far as I know, like, like you're, well, this is bigger the, than. Well, well, what's the question is, is this guy still employed? I mean, has anyone asked a question? Right. I, I mean, That's right. I don't know if it will report, but anyway, you're right, Benny. Uh, it's a big deal and there's more to come. And this is just the beginning for OMG and O'Keefe Media Group com. Check it out. And every Wednesday at four o'clock, we release another story. So stay tuned. O'Keefe Media Group com. There is the, there is the website right there. Uh, you can go, you can support James and his work. I encourage you to do so because, ha, huh, the first amendment was written for people like James, not for the bootlickers in the corporate press that just, just are there to protect their billionaire bosses. Um, that's not actually why the first amendment was written. The first amendment was written for people to protect people like James and we should all unite around him, uh, and support his work. Godspeed, James. Godspeed, Ben. Thanks. Boom, baby. We are rocking and rolling. We love Free For All Friday because Free For All Friday sends us off on good news. And today we like sometimes, sometimes we're like, ah, you know, like what? Like, is there good news? We're gonna do our best to like frame something positively? No, man, I'm feeling that energy. You feel that energy? I'm like, I'm feeling the energy right now. I, I really am. And I'm I'm like, I, I'm, I, I feel like there is a, in, in the Old Testament, which I'm a big fan of, like there are these moments where the corruption inside of these systems becomes so much that the entire system collapses. The leaders are humbled. And that those leaders then get punished. And I believe that we're at a point right now that is quite biblical. If you don't feel the heightened spirit, do you feel the heightened spiritual energy in this country? I certainly do. Just today, I can show you like four or five different lies, narratives that are collapsing in real time. And justice is being served in real time. And young men like James, but also some of the other young energy, like think about it. How lucky are we to be living in this time with a movement that includes Candace Owens and Byron Donalds and Anna Paulina Luna, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Donald Trump, Tucker Carlson. What an amazing time to be alive. Charlie Kirk. What a what an what an amazing like moment of cultural realignment. Disney getting defeated in court this week. Suing the state of Florida, getting that shredded. I mean, even like Tom McDonald and Ben Shapiro on the top of the rap charts. What world is that? Vivek Ron Swami. Like we are like li we are like living in this time where like there's so much great energy. And so many people that are being awakened right now. And it's truly special. And we are excited to have a front row seat on this program and to bring you that news and information best that we can, hopefully with a smile, a cheer, and a chuckle, and plenty, ladies and gentlemen, of salt. Okay? Plenty of salt. We're working on our salt shaker. This is our prototype. Okay? We've got our prototype. Ladies and gentlemen, it is exceedingly important that we support James O'Keefe. If you wish to support us on our front row seat and get a ticket to the show, you're welcome to watch. Obviously, anytime. We are never going to paywall this show. We never want to. But if you want to help us in our attempt to rewire broken corporate media, please go to our website, BennyJohnson.com. Sign up for the brigade for the, uh, you know what a happy meal costs these days? It costs less than a happy meal a month to support our show. And by doing so, you can keep us independent and free so that we can have shows like this where we tell you the truth, where we show you the January 6th footage that you're not allowed to show on TV. James isn't allowed on Fox News for some reason. Okay, well then come on our show. 
How about we get bigger than Fox News? And that's a great idea. How about we rebuild this ecosystem? How about we do it independently and with a single boss? And we do have one boss. Uh, that boss is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have, however, our secondary allegiance is obviously to you in this mortal world, this temporal world. And so like our boss every single day and every single show is you. And we read the comments and we read the polls and we report on the issues that are actually most valuable to our audience. So you drive the process of this show and what we talk about and speak about, not some corporate overlord master banging us about, boxing us about the ears, telling us what we can and cannot say. It's awesome. So please, if you wish to support us, it would be a blessing to us. Nonetheless, we know it's hard times out there for a lot of people. It's hard times for a lot of people. So we do the show, obviously, for free, you know? So just watch away. But if it's in your heart to support us, please do. You can get the salt. You can get the uh, salty army mug, sweet salty army tank. There's like a there's like salt on the tank. It's so, so awesome. What's also awesome is our verse of the day, ladies and gentlemen, from James. One, two. Count it all joy, my brothers. When you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and the steadfastness have the full effect on you, may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Let that steadfastness have full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, and lacking in nothing. Count it all joy when you see trials. Yeah, we've seen our share of trials. Yes, we've watched Donald Trump get a mugshot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've seen it all, ladies and gentlemen. They've thrown everything they possibly can. And yes, James says, I don't even fear death. You know, what else? What else are they going to do? Right? What else are they going to do? We're still standing. In fact, we got more energy than ever. It's backfired. And if you're here for the backfire, then baby, you're in the right place. It's your boy, Benny. This is The Benny Show. Have a wonderful weekend in this, the greatest country that God has ever created. See ya.